The first thing we're going to do is cover the genesis of the name of the program. Now, let's think about it a little bit. Midnight in the Desert. Where have you heard that before? Midnight in the Desert. Midnight in the Desert. Let me think about that. Oh, yes. There's this lovely gal in in Nashville. There's this lovely gal in Nashville who... uh, I'm hearing music. I wonder where that's coming from. It's really strange. Uh, uh, now it's gone. All right. This lovely gal in Nashville who uh, who sang it for me, and uh, her name is Crystal Gale. Crystal, welcome to the program. Well, thank you for having me on. I was so excited. <laughs> um, I, I guess now I should reach back. I should tell everybody that one day... One day you came to my house here in Nevada. You <laughs> came all the way to Pahrump, Nevada, and handed me a song on a, on a CD, and um, I, it blew me away. And then, Crystal, as time went on, and you said, I sang this for you. Here you go. It's yours. And as time went on, I fell more and more and more in love with the song. It's the last song I play every single night. And so... First of all, I guess I would like to ask about the genesis of this song. Um, did you write it yourself? I wrote this with um, Mike Laudermilk and then my husband, Bill. But Mike and I started out the song. We um, listen to your program all the time, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we just started thinking about it. And we, we said, you know, we've got to come up with something. And it just came and we wrote it, and we decided we got to. We had to bring it to you, Crystal. When you when you write a song, does it most times just come, or are a lot of them struggles to write? Yeah, a lot of it can be struggle. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but the ones that I like are the ones that just come easy, and this definitely did. But you know, what there was it just felt right, and and we we wanted to do this. Boy, it does feel right. It feels right for. Uh, by the way. You'll be interested to know, um, we had a great vote on this website, and uh, Midnight in the Desert won out hands down. Everybody wanted the program to be called that. Everybody wanted the theme to be that. This is great. So, uh, well, we are very honored. Very, very honored. I'm very honored. What are you doing these days? Well, we're still working out on the road, doing diff- different concerts, and... Uh, been in the studio working on a classic country album that's uh, in the mixing pro- process and will be out soon, and just having fun. You know, in my career, I've, I've been all over the world, made so many wonderful friends, and uh, love it, and I'm still making more. All right. I, I want an honest response here. When, when you go out on the road, man, you're really on the road. I mean, you're from spot to spot to spot to spot all over the country. Um does that wear one down after a while? Definitely, it can wear you down <laughs> real fast. <laughs> yeah, I it so. just depends. You know, when I was younger, definitely we could go day after day after day, and then uh, you get a little older, and it was like, okay, let's slow this down. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, once it's in your blood, you, you love it. I mean, you, we enjoy being out there. And as you know, my sister, Loretta Lynn, I mean, she loves it. She's still out there singing it, and it's just incredible. And and I've got to say, we're going to be at her her ranch on September fifth. We're the Van Leer girls, so uh, really, uh, my sister Peggy and, and Loretta and I will be all together there, and we have so much fun. How come so much talent gathers in one family? You know, I don't know. I think my mother would sing. My father, I think he sang and played the guitar, but mom had a twin sister that they'd sing around at socials, and <laughs> it, it was a part of our upbringing. upbringing. Uh, in Kentucky, everybody gathered on the porch, uh, and, you know, we didn't have the video machines and <laughs> everything else. Oh, I know about Kentucky. I do. It's really laid back. There's so much beautiful farm country there, horses all over the place. It's gorgeous. It's a, it's a great place. Uh, a wonderful place. You know where I am, out here in the middle of cactus country. I love the desert. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you honestly really did. You used to listen to the show, huh? Oh, yes. Yes. That's incredible. Um, I ne- That's you know, I never know who's... Just like you never know who's in the audience, I never know 
who's out there. That's right. Well, we listen, love it, and uh, inspired that song. Definitely. Somehow I can imagine you all listening as you're on a bus or on something going from, you know, one gig to another. Definitely that, uh, at home as well. <laughs> it's, um, you know, when you enjoy something, and, and I enjoy what you talk about, so all the interesting things. Well, yeah. when I, I played this, you know, I'm married again. I played it for my wife, and she just absolutely fell in love with it. And then I told her that I actually met you, and I showed her your picture, and she about fell over herself. So, um, I've got to ask you about your hair. Um, you're world famous for your hair. You're, uh, there was some rumor or something. I, I don't know. I heard from somebody that you were at one time thinking of cutting it. No. <laughs> I have been cutting it back some. It's not quite as long, but uh, no, it's hard to get rid of something that's been with you as long as it has. So uh, that's one thing. But you know, I do dream about having short hair. You know, where I can just <laughs> wash it and go. <laughs> <laughs> How hard is it? I mean, that's uh, you, when I saw you. It was at your ankles. Now I can't even imagine hair that long. Um, it, but, but it's part of your trademark now. So I'm sure. Anybody connected with you is also saying, no, don't cut your hair, right? Uh, you know, the, some have said through the years, cut it, and some have said no. But, you know, <laughs> I, you know I owe my, my long hair to my American Indian heritage. I'm K Cherokee. And it just grows so fast. And uh, I had no I've idea you had Cherokee. From 9 to 12 inches off a year. 9 to 12? Yeah, yeah, you know, it just grows so fast. I don't know how long my hair would have been if I'd never trimmed it. In other words, you might be trailing it like a bridal thing. Yeah. <laughs> when I started stepping on it, I said, that's too long. So I had, <laughs> that's when I cut it back. So 9 to 12 is like how much it grows in a year? Yeah. You know, I okay. think uh, the normal is like, for most people, I think is about six inches. But I started measuring my, my trimmings through the year. And it was from 9 to 12 inches. Well, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I think that's why when you appear somewhere, they frequently get television shots or, you know, photo shots of you from the rear to show your hair. Yes, they have. Well, again, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to have the show named Midnight in the Desert. I'm in love with that song. And, you know, if I weren't entangled, I'd be in love with you, too. All right, so I had to do that. I had to do that at the beginning of the program. There was just no two ways about it. What a wonderful lady. And and I'm not kidding you when I say she got on an airplane, came all the way out here, came to my house, had lunch, and handed that to me and said, here, this is for you. And I listened to it once, and I said, oh, thank you so much. And, you know, it kind of ended there for a little while. And then I started listening more and more and more to the song. And the more I heard it, the more I began to fall in love with it, really in love with it. So that's how this show became what it is. And the good people at Belgab, that's a, a website that kind of follows the, uh, the show, voted this as what should be the name of the program. And so that's how it happened. That beautiful, talented lady is the reason.